Linda and I go so far back that um, uh, we, 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 we predate <laughs> nuclear fuel. <laughs> I'm really glad to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia, for inviting me. And it's good to see a lot of people I know here. Um, of course, you live in Berkeley. I don't. I live near, uh, I live in Los Osos, uh, which is near San Luis Obispo. And my house is around mm, seven or eight miles from Diablo Canyon. Um, I'm a spokesperson for the San Luis Obispo Mothers for Peace. And we've been fighting Diablo Canyon since before it was built. Uh, we became the legal interveners uh, with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission in 1973. And we have, we did never get it shut down, as you know, but we have made Diablo Canyon safer because of all of uh, the work that we've done, the, the, especially the legal interventions that we've done with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And now we're involved with the California Public Utilities Commission um, in the decommissioning case. So there, we, uh, sort of legal stuff is our shtick. Um, and, but but we, have, we have a bunch of different avenues. And then I also am, am on a panel, which is called the Diablo Canyon Decommissioning Engagement Panel. And the Decommissioning Engagement Panel was formed uh, by PG&E. But unfortunately, mm, it's a little bit too hard to explain. But it ended up with having 11 people from our community on the panel who are actually community representatives. Not all of them are anti-nuclear, but the more that we've been working together for, since a year, uh, for almost two years. Wow, it'll be two years in May. When they, just, uh, the, when they had to form this panel by order of the PUC, was it, John? Yeah, um, it was, they didn't do it voluntarily. Um, so, but what's happened during this time, during these two years, is that the, more, the, the people are just like regular residents of San Luis Obispo who have been very engaged in our community. But they were, they always have, a PG&E, by the way, Harvey told me this one, a PG, <laughs> the only place in the whole world where people like PG&E is San Luis Obispo, okay? <laughs> and that's because PG&E has given so much money to, into our town. They are, with nonprofits, with the tax base, supporting the schools, all that. So they, and they have cultivated, through the past 35 years, cultivated this very um, schmoozy relationship with our community. And, you know, the people, the members of the, um, Board of Supervisors and all the mayors and all that. They take them to lunch and they give money. And so everybody loves PG&E, except for some of us. Um, and well, actually a lot of us. But the more um, sort of run of the, or mill of, run of the mill people, oh, they think PG&E is fine. They're, and they go like, oh, they killed 82 people. Well, well. They're fine here. Um, so it's, anyway, this panel, as we have worked on it, when, as the people have learned more about nuclear waste, this is the thing. Nope, they were all like, oh, yeah, they're taking care of it. Nobody knew about what was really going on with the nuclear waste. And this is the thing, I know we're talking about shutting Diablo tonight, but the thing that even if we shut Diablo tonight, we still have the nuclear waste. We will always have the nuclear waste. And what our job now is, is to make sure that that nuclear waste is stored in the best way humanly possible. Because right now, they have it stored in canisters. The nuclear waste canister, well, it's about as high as this ceiling, okay? Each canister holds um, 36 um, assemblies. Each assembly holds, I think, uh, 
1,200 fuel rods, okay? Um, they're about 20 feet in diameter. They're huge, okay? They're huge. They hold the nuclear waste, okay? The canister that they're in is a half inch thick. A half inch thick stainless steel, okay? I don't know about you, but have you ever noticed that stainless steel actually corrodes? <laughs> um, and then it's a half inch thick that's put inside a um, cement canister that is, has rebar inside of it to reinforce it. And there, these canisters are, go in these huge machines, they go up and then they get loaded down into the, into the cement uh, cask. And they're supposed, and oh, the other thing is that they're guaranteed, uh, there, there is a, not a warranty, I don't know what you would call it, but guaranteed for 20 years, okay? <laughs> I'm serious, I'm, I'm serious. 20, but they've extended the licenses for, for most of them that are uh, saying they're fine. The problem with it is that, oh, they're fine, but we don't know that because they can't be inspected. Be, they can't be inspected because they're the, the oh, I don't know what you call that thing where you put something in something else and it's really tight in there. Um, there isn't much room between the outside and the inside. And the only way that they've figured out so far to kind of measure it is to put a little tiny robot camera through the top and then crawl around, but they can't cover the whole surface. So, so far they have inspected one canister at Diablo Canyon in 2014. It had the conditions for cracking which means it, it, is, it wasn't cracked, as far as they could see, but it did have etching on it. If you have etching on stainless steel, it can start to corrode, crack, and then leak. So, we don't know anything since 2014 about this. We have 58 of those canisters out there right now. By the time Diablo Canyon is finished operating, if it stays going till its anointed time, which we of course are you know, trying to do everything we can stop it from, it, they're, they're gonna have a 158 canisters, 158 plus one more for uh, greater than class C waste, which is uh, other really horrible radioactive stuff. It's a lot of nuclear waste. It's a tremendous amount. So what we have to do, and right now, right at this very moment, the, uh, the uh, PG&E is, is about to issue this thing called a request for, a propo for proposals, which is, I'm sure you've heard of this, like you, you want to contract something out, you get a bunch of proposals, okay? This is for nuclear waste storage, okay? So there are about five companies in the world that make uh, a nuclear waste storage um, uh, canisters and casks. And so they're going to put out this bid for these people to, um, they have certain specifications they have to, that have to be met, but they can exceed those specifications if they want to, right? But the Nuclear Regulatory Commission says you have to have this and that and it and that. What's not included in those specifications by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is to be able to monitor it 24 hours a day. To be, they've, oh, in these canisters, what they do in order to prevent criticality is they, uh, they dry it out and fill it with helium, okay? and inert gas. It helps to keep it safer. The only problem is we don't know how, we don't know if the helium gas is still in there or not. Uh, we started loading our canisters in um, 2009 and that we don't have any way of measuring 
the helium pressure. So what we say is, well, we need to be able to ma monitor the hel helium pressure. We need to be able to monitor the temperature. We need to be able to monitor the radiation 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we need to be able to move them. We need to be able to fix them if they fail. So these are quite simple uh, demands or requests. However, those, those are not included in the criteria that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has uh, set out. So our job is to make PG&E raise the bar on safer storage of nuclear waste. Um, I think my time is up, is it? Did you give us an action? Oh, an action, yes. Okay, so uh, how do I put this succinctly? Okay, the California Energy Commission, in, John is going to tell you about this, in the new settlement agreement um, between PG&E and the PUC, the, the, the PUC, or PG&E, said that the California Energy Commission is actually going to be able to set criteria for um, the, the safer storage of the nuclear waste, or the safe storage of the nuclear waste. You can call the California Energy Commission. Um, Oh, shoot, I've got the number. Okay. Okay. I'll put it, yeah, okay. Uh, you can call the California Energy Commission and say, I'm interested, I want safer, I want higher standards for the, for the storage of nuclear waste, okay? Um, that, if they know that there's pressure building, that people are aware of, of this issue and that people care about it, uh, I think it will help a tremendous amount. Okay, thank you. Thank you.